Bruce Bush with Sandy Adventure 1.0, 2.0, or School Relay Network. Thank you. 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 His work, Sailboat Christians, is a 1978, Alley in 27, and I received it. I was able to purchase it. And we went like new boat owners to the new expo that was just around the corner and to find out new things we could buy for her. What could we buy? <laughs> what could we do with her? And we're wandering around this big, huge building. And there's a table there with several people around it, promoting a local sailing club. And there's this guy that had a captain's hat on, being important, and he said, it's easy to be a sailor. When you achieve these three things, you're a sailor. So I said about achieving them. The first one, there's no win, and you cannot return to the dock. <laughs> I practiced that one <laughs> along with the second one the engine will not start when you want to return to the dock <laughs> well on my first book sailboat I practiced that several times I'm not really sure how we got back a couple of times one time we had to call the boat tow truck and then grounding grounding is where you hit the bottom of the water, the ground, and you're stuck. And it's not just for sailboats. It can even be a steamboat in Portland, Oregon, because they hills and valleys at the bottom of the Columbia are rather interesting. So we wanted to get a bigger boat because my wife is a flight attendant and she wanted to have some place to stay in between the trips when she only had a day or two off. It's too hard to come back to Colorado. So we got bigger boats. Well, bigger boats, bigger problems. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, this is our third boat that we bought because we sold the second boat. And just to point out here, the this little boat here in this corner here, the house behind it, we've listed in Seattle. That's the side. Oh. Well, that is the house. That is the house. Wow. And it is fun to be there for a while. Because we when we bought the boat, we needed a place to store it for a while until we found a slip. So I made a deal with the salesman that would stay there. But you add complexity to this little thing called a boat. There's a engine, there's sales, of course. There's the head, they call it in the marine environment, eating areas, and of course the propeller to make it go someplace. So we've learned a lot. We've had a lot of adventures. And one of the adventures we had was when we move around Seattle, there's bridges everywhere. And sailboats, you have to get the bridge to race. Mm -hmm. And at certain times of the day, you're on the wrong side of that bridge, it won't raise because traffic has priority. Mm -hmm. So you just sit there and wait. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes, Greg. That's what you do. Wow. <laughs> Otherwise, you hit the mast and then you end up going to the, the boat yard, which is no fun. I'll mm -hmm. guarantee you that. Then to get out of Lake Union, now Seattle, you have to. Lake Union is higher, believe it or not, than Puget Sound and water level. So you have to go through the locks, the Ballard locks. You go into this big container, they fill it up to the top, to the, even to the water, you go in, you tie up to the side, or you might have to tie up to the other boats. It's scary, especially the stories. And then they lower the water, then you go out. The first time we went, you have these bumpers you put on the side of the boat to protect yourself from the, the wall that has 
nice all creatures on. That's great. And two out of the four deflated. So we survived. And then I would then we were told whenever we come out of the locks, this big huge bridge down here that's up. It's always up. Never <laughs> down. <laughs> I've been through the locks three times. Twice. That bridge has been down. And there's not a whole lot of room between where the now until you get to that bridge. So and then bridges. This is another bridge that's very famous. We found a moorage over west of we, Seattle, Washington, over on Bainbridge Island. And to get there, we have to go under this bridge. And there's tides and currents. You have to time it right so you're not, it's not flowing in or flowing out to go under this bridge. And you have to time it correctly so that there's enough water, airspace, so that you don't hit the mast. So here shortly, in fact, yesterday I started negotiating to go to get my rigging done on my mast. All the steel wires have to be replaced. It's time. We've used their life. So now I'm going to have to go back under this bridge through the big water to Fort Townsend, Oregon. I'm sure somebody knows where that is. And this quote is going to be reminding me a lot on the way because I have to go out in big ship traffic, ferry traffic, currents, and I'm not really sure what else I may encounter. Maybe whales, hopefully dolphins. So that's what I'm going to be doing here shortly. 